it go. <laughs> Hi, Cecilia. <Chichilia>. Ciao. <laughs> Hello friends, Maria Helena will be with us shortly, so just waiting and then I'll add her in. Hi Helen, hi Julia, <laughs> ciao. Everybody. Hi Joe. Hi Maria Elena. Let's go. <coughs> Hi Lucy. I've added Maria Elena so she'll be joining soon. Hi Sauron. Hello, bye. I hope you've all got your tea at the ready. Got mine. I'll just try and add her again. Just a minute. Hello. Good afternoon. Good evening. Good morning. Where are we? <laughs> Hello. <Good day. laughs> Lovely to I'm see you. I'm sorry for the um, little glitch in the beginning. I uh, did not get the invitation right away. That's okay. We're here now. <laughs> Hello to everybody. Yeah, we've got lots of people with us at the moment. Hi, Cecilia. That's great. That's great. So so I want to say hello to everyone um, from New Orleans. We um, already have a full-blown summer here with everything blooming and um, it's really hard to stay inside. Mm. And um, I guess to get started, um, I'll go back to the moment when we were discussing what we should talk about, right? Mm. Mm -hmm as we all staying at home and um, and um, I've heard that on TV and everywhere just many times that this is the time we should all take this project that we have been dreaming about that we at some point in our lives will have time to do it. And um, seems like um, now that we have time to do it, um, um, now that we have time to do it, um, we might experience some kind of, at least me, I experience I'm, I'm a little bit creatively paralyzed. So um, maybe to tackle something that we have never tackled in our lives would be just asking too much from ourselves and maybe mm -hmm. something but smaller task would be a better thing mm, to something do right more now. familiar. Yeah. Right, yeah. right. Yeah. So what um I was thinking, um, and this interesting topic came up thanks to you, Kate, and um I had it in my mind as well. Is what do I do in these times that I really don't have work to do, but I want to do something. I, I wanna log in just a few hours, maybe mm -hmm. every day. Mm -hmm. Um, maybe you or somebody else would want to log in just a few hours a week. Yeah. So um, I have done a, this prayer that um, I've done many times in my life. And, and before I start switching down um, and maybe telling you about this, um, I have this little um, checklist 
-hmm. and I've already gotten some questions. Thank you, all my friends. Send yeah, those we've questions. Had some, some questions. So, um, the the question was that if this is going to be for the beginners. Mm -hmm. So I'm glad that the little chat that I put together and I I made some pointers for myself. Yeah. Is is starting from the most basic and then going if we even get there to yeah. some more complicated mm -hmm. aspects of the design. So Lovely. the first ones are really so basic that you might laugh at me and think that uh, you know everybody know. knows them. But then again, every so often I go and attend classes and I see those rules kind of ignored. Mm -hmm. So we're going to go to those first. Also, before I get started, I say that usually in the beginning of my classes that um, rules, don't they just um, sound so boring? Mm -hmm. um, so I say a rule is something that applies about maybe most of the time, maybe 60, 70, 80% of the time. And the rest of the time, it's to be ignored. Mm -hmm. And I think the real great pieces come out when we ignore some rules sometimes mm -hmm. and not follow them exactly. So even though I go over them, you don't have to follow every rule in mm -hmm. every piece. Also, I came up with this very interesting point that I sometimes try to do when I do my artwork is that, okay, well, I know how to do gilding. I know how to do drawing. I know how to do broad edge pen. I know how to do pointed pen. Uh, let's just put it all together. The thing that you can do. Mm -hmm. Maybe just stick with a couple of focal points for your piece, especially for the beginners. Yeah. You first of all, the beginners can't do everything anyway. But the thing is that even if you're not a beginner, you don't want to put all of your skills together into one piece of artwork. Mm -hmm. So it will turn out to overwhelming. Mm -hmm. So that's that's about rules. So what what I start with. Um, and before I get to this, um, and now I'm going to try to um, turn my yep. phone down. Let's do this one. <laughs> yeah. It's okay. But I don't know how to reverse it. That's okay. There should be a little arrow at the top of your screen, little two arrows, I think, um, that rotate. So if you hit that, then it should flick your screen. I can see some connection issues. I'm not sure if they're on my side or on Maria Helena's side. So bear with it. <laughs> okay. I think because she's just switching the screen. Uh, we'll just wait for her to come back and then we can start again. So I think the main the main thing that um, I took from the chat that I'd had earlier, what we had earlier with Maria Helena, was that this necess isn't necessarily the time to take on a whole new project to learn something completely new. That um, it is actually a nice time to just be with what you're familiar with and maybe work on that. So um, she's she's going to be building on that today and. Uh, yeah, hopefully giving us some re direction to or to redirect the work that we that we know so well, maybe to to have a think about how that might be done differently. I'm connecting. We're back. <laughs> no, I'm, I'm just I... turning it down. <laughs> That's fine. I'm not going to try to turn it. Is it upside down right now? It is upside down. 
and okay well that's good i'm gonna turn reverse, but you know what i think yeah that's fine we can't do anything about it being in reverse but we can okay. see we can so, see the design so that's that's fine so guys um if you see this blue thing here you can uh we're just on the edge of the table so you just yeah they're perfect yep now you can see this blue thing yes okay so i have this little prayer that i've done for many years um you can see that prayer mm -hmm. we just can't see the bottom of it so you may need to to just tilt this yeah that's fine that's yeah fine. Um, mm -hmm. the thing is that my pieces are pretty big so i, yeah. I don't think I <laughs> that's have fine. At, all, at all what what happened here this is not original this is mm -hmm. something uh, done on a color copier uh, mm -hmm. from original work mm -hmm. and what i did with this is that i decided that instead of create a whole new piece yep. i shall take this piece and rework it several times so what i did here is i had already pre previously centered it but obviously not perfect so you see my center line doesn't go all the way through the mm -hmm. center at all here mm -hmm. so what i did here this is my rough now so you can all take something out of the frame mm -hmm. and um see what how you can do this piece over perhaps so that maybe you can add some of this new knowledge that we talk about today to yes. this new piece. So what I've done here, I measured my, um, my X height. I measured the, the space between lines. I also tried to do a centered layout here, which is always a good uh, option for a beginner to yeah. to do just the simply centered layout. I mean, there is nothing wrong with it. We don't have to reinvent the wheel and do all kind of stag staggering and mm -hmm. and justifying right or left. And we get to that later, hopefully. But simply centering something is okay. So now I took my old piece of work. I also put one, two, three, four, five. So if I start copying the text, I don't skip a line because um, um, because, guys, if you skip a line, that's probably one mistake that cannot be corrected, mm -hmm. even on vellum, um, because you can't scratch off uh, or add a line in. So I'm always usually kind of um, giving each line a number so that I follow and I make sure when I... So now, the same prayer... This is my rough. It's not the first time, but this is the rough that I use in whenever I do this prayer. Mm -hmm. This prayer now I have done many times, and I'm going to show you some of those. And um, perhaps you're going to get back of them later so that I tell you why some of them are successful and why some of them are not so successful. So this one happens to be on vellum. This one um, I'm showing you next. You see, they're all using the same layout, right? Yeah. I've been taking this layout and milking it for what it's worth. Yeah, amazing, because you wouldn't, you wouldn't even right. think, you know, seeing Right, things. right. Yeah. <clears throat> so, um, and you know, I have quite a bit of those. Some of them without decoration, like this. I don't know if you can see this. Mm -hmm. There's yeah. a, um, yeah. Now, one here has some gilding on it. And again, you see, I'm going to yeah. move it a little yeah. bit. Again. Sorry, I'm just kind so, of messing And up. then up to uh, a little bit more contemporary versions of mm -hmm. the prayer. Mm -hmm. So you see, all of this is the same layout. Yeah. And so different, just so different. It's amazing. Right. So, if you have a piece that you already have figured out a layout, I think my first kind of advice for you would to be to take the same prayer or the same poem or the same mm -hmm. quote and try to do it in, in a little bit different ways. Um, so that's probably all of the prayers now that... Um, and I can see you've used different color ink. You've changed the color of the yes. decoration. Yes, completely and it's changes. Kind of, the... um, right. So it's, it's this is my my advice that when I feel really not very inspired, 
not very motivated, which is all the time right now. Mm. Um, not very inspired, not very motivated. Um, rather wanting to eat instead of doing art. Um, <laughs> is that I take something that is familiar and then I rework it. Right. So, um, yeah. and what I do is I play with color, as you see here. And yeah. I play with, um, with different ink. Um, I play with different um, decoration. Um, I also play with different line spacing. Mm -hmm. So um, this is kind of like a task that I would recommend to you. But now, beginners, your time is coming. So um, um, if I am a beginner, what do I do when I first start with my... Um, with my work. It's very, very kind of self-explanatory, but um, I'm just putting this little black piece of paper here. I may just need what to move it a little bit towards you. Okay. Yeah, yeah, thank you, perfect. Okay, so what I do first is um, I make sure um, that the very common mistake I see and I do it myself is that um, I take a piece of paper and it's too small I end up covering the whole piece of paper edge to edge and I call that a gift wrap effect I mean um, artwork actually needs to have a little bit of so I'm just kind of taking off my piece of paper some margins that I mm -hmm. know mm -hmm. and you know leave general margins. The margins are very important because they are going to separate your artwork from the rest of the world. Mm -hmm. They give the artwork a little piece too. So how much margin should you leave? I would say better more than too little. Mm -hmm. Leave yourself like three or four inches around. So you probably need um, two to three times bigger piece of paper yep. than um, you actually end up using because you can always later on, as beginners, if you don't have the design ready already, you can use those margins for some kind of design or you can just simply cut them off mm -hmm. at the end. Mm -hmm. So this is the rule number one, leave generous margins, okay? The, the most common and the easiest mistake to make and the easiest to fix before you start mm -hmm. is leave the margins and the wrong thing would not to be leaving enough space. Okay, now, if you have looked at my, wor um, my artwork, um, my next advice to the beginners would be, um, or anybody, is that I really don't use ever a medium tone paper as my background. And um, just to kind of demonstrate it, um, I have these papers here to kind of show you, um, because a medium um, color background never makes the design pop entirely off okay. of the paper. So you mean and you, again, one end of the spectrum kind of thing? Well, sorry, right, right. Right. So here I have some kind of like papers mm -hmm. that will make a successful design. Mm -hmm. So they're all kind of in the light family you see here. Yeah. So there's some, some are gray or something. So yeah. now on those papers, of course, I would use the um, um, darker inks, right? Mm -hmm. And again, um, I'm not a um, pro on the Instagram chat, but this is all meant for point and pen people because yeah. um, broad edge pen people can simply take um, wider nib or a bigger nib and, and make the lettering yes. thicker and yes. it will stand out from much more variety of backgrounds than the 
um, kind of fainty pointed pen lettering needs all the help we can give it. Yes. So one thing would be not making our life harder and giving us ourselves a background that the, our lettering will not pop on. Mm -hmm. So I actually, I'm in favor personally of darker papers. So I have a variety of these here that are my favorites. Black, and you, if you look gray. at the darker papers, right. Yeah. So, and then of course I would use the lighter inks on those. Yeah. And uh, I get a, an additional pop actually after the piece gets framed because most walls are light as well. That's true, yeah. So um, there's an additional pop. So I actually discard and do not use, and but I have of the um, medium tone papers and, and I don't know if they show here or not, but these would be the ones here that yeah. kind of are, you see yellows and yeah. just nothing will really come out of those very well. So mm -hmm. because we want our lettering to pop and to pop a, a lettering that's extreme thins and thicks, mm -hmm. it's just not easy. So let's pick a paper that will help us, okay? I also I don't do use this. In, sorry. I was just going to say, in the Sea Stones workshop, um, with, we were working on, when we worked on black uh, paper, black background with the lighter colored ink, you also, you know, you added a, a touch of color to that white color ink, didn't you? Is that, was, was that to help make that pop or just to give it a little bit of a different, um, you know, a different edge to it sort of thing? Right, um, both are correct. Um, I don't usually use white out of the um, jar Mm -hmm. But now I'm getting to the next point and I make a um, really good demonstration with this, hopefully, is sure. that um, now before we start lettering something down um, on this paper that we have picked, that will help you. It's either dark or light. And we have then picked our either white ink, which is for me is usually Dr. Martin's bleed proof white. Then um, we look at our piece of work and think what is the most important part of my artwork. Now I would like to think that because we are calligraphers, that the answer would be that the most important um, part would be um, the um, lettering. So I'm pulling out this piece that shows this kind of, wow. shows this pretty well. Mm -hmm. You see, we have a little bit of a delay, but I can see when you can see it. Mm -hmm. So now this, the interesting thing about this piece is I've used only two colors of ink here. I think maybe three. Mm -hmm. So I have decided that my text needs to pop, okay? You see the text in the middle here? Yeah. This is my text here. Yeah. So I make that my lightest color. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I see that. So now for, for my text to pop and for my design, to recede into the background, I have to use a slightly darker color. It doesn't have to be grayer. It just has to be darker. Mm -hmm. So it, it will recede into the background yeah. more. Okay? Yeah. So that helps my lettering to pop. So what I have done here, and what you guys can do, is that you mix one ink for lettering. Like you take your Dr. Martin's bleed proof white, if you mm -hmm. have a black paper or whatever um, ivory wash. Um, yep. 
if you work for um, light paper. And then um, you start adding some other color to it. Usually here, I started adding red to the white. Yeah. So I made possibly five to six different degradations mm -hmm. and then decided each time when I used them, um, where which was the most important thing so for example if you see the thing around the beauty which is all done with pointer pen Isn't um you wow. see it's yeah. it's a little darker than the the frame going around yeah, yeah. so and around my, the... my next point that i'm trying to make here is that the lettering if you want your message to come through and you guys all do a lot of that i see um um quite a bit of beautiful decoration online mm -hmm. um why not switch from one ink to a little bit different ink for the decoration yeah. so that which is closer to your background so that your lettering will pop better so like if you write an envelope there's a beautiful envelope exchange that i saw and do a flower design around it why not use a slightly more muted ink for the flower design so that the lettering will pop out. Mm -hmm. Do you see what I'm saying? Yeah, absolutely. Getting a lot so of the, right, oh, right. Yeah, so just, yeah, you, yeah. you decide kind of that, well, my decoration is a decoration unless it's a main thing. And if my decoration is the main thing, then perhaps I'm not a calligrapher, perhaps I'm a painter. Mm -hmm. um, so um so that is kind of what um what is a good advice for beginners and it's not hard to do it's just pour a little bit of an ink in a different container yeah. and add something that will blend it more into the background and so Maybe did you just the gray ink did you um have all the different gradations of ink set up before you did um, the I or as you went both yeah more as i went Mm -hmm. So you would have a, like a piece of paper next to you um, and make sure each time you, you mix in a new color that there's enough difference between those two because yes. anything made out of gouache tends to, so I'm just putting the little colors then on my on little scrap paper mm -hmm. because gouache tends to um, dry darker. Than okay. it is. So, mm. what if I working on a beautiful white paper, and then um, I'm showing this uh, piece here, and it's going to come to your screen soon. Yeah, we can see now. But um, here, actually, um, I used only one ink, and I um, added just a little bit more white to it. So I wanted to make my flourish just lighter. Okay. So these flourishes actually are added later, mm -hmm. and um, but I still wanted my lettering to pop. Yeah. So here on the light background, instead of so I was adding lighter ink to my to the lettering. So you've added the flourishes with the slightly the flourishes, lighter. right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So the same concept. Yep. Done on now. So that um. I lose you. I lose uh, Kate's voice for a little while. So, okay. and, and just to easily, easily kind of, um, I have this little thing that I did for Easter here. And mm -hmm. let's just see it. Yeah, yeah. Let's just see it. It's, it's done on a, and you see those two papers mm -hmm. next to each other. Mm -hmm. And I have this little Easter thing here. It yeah. says Happy Easter. Yes, it was yeah. my la latest post. To what, to now I put it on the. I put it on the dark background. I don't know yeah. if you can see it. Yes, yeah, that's good there. How it pops. Yeah. Now, what if I decided to take a pink ink and use it on um, a white background? 
it just gets lost, right? Yes, yeah. So it's just this, this is a good demonstration to show mm -hmm. you that um, to keep this popping effect in, in mind when you're designing a piece of work that um, your main ink for lettering or for the main lettering, because maybe you have different letterings. Maybe the yes. author's name yes. is not that important. Maybe mm -hmm. the poem's name, maybe there's a footnote or something. Yeah. Um, so that the main lettering should probably be in the most popping yeah. color. Yep, absolutely. Okay, so um, I don't know if we, we um, should take any questions about that or should I move on to the next point? Yeah, well, just, I mean, mostly people have just been uh, commenting on how breathtaking <laughs> the work is. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so I think they've been really... I am so sorry, everybody, that I cannot speak and read at the same time <laughs> no that's okay it's fine you'll be able to so see this is my the little, um, and i can i can post that at some point but i'm i'm getting to um so anyway we just went over something that i'm calling ranking of importance mm -hmm. so i just rank that something that is more important in my artwork should pop out better yes. and ranking in important in of importance is what i want more than decorating decoration being the star because mm -hmm. as a calligrapher i want people to to read my my work so um and we were talking about popping and receding uh, versus which you want uh, mm -hmm. versus sameness in yep. weight and shade we don't want the sameness throughout the work, okay? Mm -hmm. So now um, we are getting to grouping. So doing designs is, is kind of, and then I, I can go back to possibly, well, maybe, maybe I'll try to find something else, but it's... Mm -hmm. um, Okay, I'm just finding this piece of work here. Okay. I don't know if you can see it. Yes, yeah, can see. Maybe just a little bit towards you. Yes, mm -hmm. perfect. Thank you. Okay. So what I wanted to talk right now is is um, grouping. And I think this, this piece, if you can even see a little bit of um, the pointed pen on the bottom yeah, too. Yeah, purple. The purple. Mm -hmm. So there is there is a grouping happening. Um, yeah. Grouping is something that when I was given this design talk to my husband the other day on my front porch outside, <laughs> um, I think the easiest thing is to to compare grouping to to interior design. Yep. So if you are going to put a coffee table and a sofa and two chairs around your coffee table and the sofa as well, it's a grouping. You're grouping things together, okay? Mm -hmm. yep. Now, what is something that is versus grouping, what we don't want? I call that escaping. Mm -hmm. So we don't want any strays on our artwork. Unfortunately, I was not able to find any pieces of work where I had made a stray. Okay. Um, but um, let's see, guys, if I can make one right now. Um, I'd like to see that. <laughs> so, <laughs> tell me when you see it. I can see it just a little bit towards you. Yeah, okay. Yeah, that's it. You see it, it's like a white piece of paper and it has this lettering on it. Yes. Okay. And bearing in I mind the lettering is backwards to us because of the, the switch of the camera. No, it's, it's, it's actually in reverse. But that's we can see the the shapes and we can see the letters. So, um, is that better? Yeah, it's just that it's in reverse because of the front camera. So the only way to fix it would be to have your camera switched. But it gives us an idea. The way that it is gives us an idea of the shapes okay. and the ring and so the you kind of can see mirrored. The... Thank you. <laughs> it's mirrored. You can see this. This is like a group, right? Yeah. So I established yep. a group. Mm -hmm. So now, how do I how do I do something wrong and make 
like on my design, little bit of design that I'm adding to it to escape, which is I don't want to do. Mm -hmm. So what if I took a little flower and put it right here? Can you see it? Yes. I'm making a little flower here. Yep. I'll make it in pencil. Hopefully I can erase it. Because <laughs> I don't want it there. <laughs> I hope so. <laughs> so now it's escaping away from my design. Mm -hmm. It no longer belongs in the group. Yep. So we want to group things in some ways rather than have some design elements to escape. Yeah. So, and so that our design and within, lettering will have conversation. Sorry. Uh, within the, the group that you have there that you've circled, you also have different colors. So you've got the, um, the red flourishing. Is that class as a, a group within the group you know is that a, a separate group or is it kind of more the focus of that whole piece is the group itself uh, okay i would say i would say it this way well this the the bigger lettering is the couch mm -hmm. and this is the coffee table <laughs> yeah yep <laughs> and those are the two chairs here gotcha. yeah. and then this one chair escaped <laughs> okay it's just a different room now <laughs> <laughs> so whoever wants to join the group would have to pull the chair back in okay uh, which is okay. quite a nuisance i guess mm -hmm. um it's good to have a spear but not on your artwork no <laughs> okay so that's our that's our lounge room right there <laughs> living room mm -hmm. okay <laughs> so um if if anybody has uh, questions about that but okay. again this is something that it's um i'm pulling out this kind of like an older um piece of work here that i'm we have a little bit of a delay but yes. what i'm trying to show about this work and i'm going to move it around that you all see it and what i have done with this work is is you can see this kind of can you see that little bit of yeah. um uh bottom on top um so in order for all of this not to escape i have establish this kind of order borders mm -hmm. are usually pretty good for um for uh, helping us avoid any kind of escaping so um because this piece has quite a bit of emptiness around it i wanted it to have a finish and an end mm -hmm. so um this is a good example of how I have pulled the group together, which is what I did, for example, with my little coffee table and chairs, yeah. and I put a rug underneath it, okay? Yeah. yeah. So um, this is my rug. So mm -hmm. that shows that also this is a grouping and those things belong together. Mm -hmm. Um. No, um, also, which is very important is, is a contrast. Mm -hmm. And for that, um, I'm bringing out this piece of work here. Now you, you see my, I can actually post those, um, things, what you want and what you don't want my little, um, white sheet that you get to see every now and okay. so um here i have contrasted my um and again it's just kind of we set it up differently and if we ever do it again i think you could be on the bottom of the screen yeah. <laughs> so that the lettering would be not on top of my um design so it kind of but but what you see guys here is that I have taken something that is smaller. This lettering is kind of small, and this is my swinging copper plate here, by the way. And I have used this, the swinging copper plate is here, justified to the left, mm -hmm. um, which is a very, very easy way to, to write anything, is to justify it to the left. Mm -hmm. um, it's it's great thing to do because you can then put a decoration either here 
yes. um, the edge that you see. Or what I've done here, I put the decoration on the other side, okay? Yeah, so balanced the balance so side. Mm -hmm. this this decoration this piece kind of illustrates two things obviously the lettering gives us some contrast oh you know we we also see the grouping that we we're talking about i also put the the design close enough so that it's not escaping mm -hmm. but also i feel that this small lettering and this bigger flower they contrast yeah with each other yeah so, so there's that's, two that's C's. Well. yeah so there's two C's that I want we want contrast mm -hmm. and we want complementing okay we want contrast and we want complementing so mm -hmm. it does both here so it contrasts in the size, but it complements in color. Mm -hmm. So actually, I have not followed my own rule here, which so is that, that is the same. Mm -hmm. So my own rule that the lettering should be lighter has not been followed here quite well. Okay, mm -hmm. so this is an example of successful and unsuccessful design. Well. <laughs> <laughs> I would be claiming that as unsuccessful. <laughs> so, but but you see the the complementing is now in, important. So, mm -hmm. what kind of um, design complements me? And and I do quite a bit of my designs or illustrations. I would call them rather with the same pen that I litter with. Mm -hmm. Because it also gives me this kind of delicate line that my lettering has in. So that is just plain lazy, first of all. But um, then, of course, I have to take out the <laughs> Or is it genius? <laughs> paint it a little bit. Um, so I think we went over... Um, but I, I want to go back to that for the beginners as mm -hmm. well, that I really do not like very complicated designs. Mm -hmm. I think if you have just two things in your portfolio, which is centering and justifying to the right, to the left, I'm sorry, it's hard to justify mm -hmm. to the right. Don't try that. Mm -hmm. um, or try it when you really have a lot of patience. Uh-huh. So centering or justifying to the left mm -hmm. um, is, is what we um, can use like any time. And it doesn't need a lot of layout. For centering, you probably need to write everything out one time and see how much each line yeah. takes. Yeah. So, um, mm -hmm. right. But with justifying, you don't even need that. Okay, so I try to now if I turn this around, can you see it then? Um, not upside down. It's not that it's upside down; it's that it's mirrored. Uh, oh, it's so mirrored. It's, yeah, so it doesn't really matter which way you turn the the phone, unless you were to switch the phone to the main camera. It's that it's using the front facing camera, um, mm -hmm. but because your phone is in the tripod, it's tricky to switch it all around. Um, but we can definitely see the, we can see the design. We can see the lettering. Um, we're just okay. in mirror in reverse. So, um, so the centering and justifying, um, I use those as versus randomness. So mm -hmm. oftentimes we, we take a quote and start lettering it. So the question is, how do, um, how do we arrange something? So if it's a poem, it already is arranged for you. You mm -hmm. cannot change the lines of a poem. Um, the line endings usually frame, um, rhyme with each other, or if they don't, they still have to remain where they 
are. Mm -hmm. If you're writing out a quote, it's a little different. So everything is either a poem or a quote or a text. Mm -hmm. And the text, the quote is the same thing. So if you're trying to arrange a quote, then you obviously have to pick yourself where you're going to put the um, line breaks, right? Mm -hmm. So I actually went back to my teacher to see what she um, recommended. And um, she actually says that um, very short lines are not good, okay? Very long lines are not good. They're hard to read. So um, I would not arrange my work in lines that are longer than 9 to 11 uh, words long. It depends on how long the lines are, but mm -hmm. uh, the words are. But don't try to get more than 9 to 11 lines, sorry, words on your line. Words, yeah, okay. So, and then there's a general rule. I've already got some questions and we go, go to them if we have time. Um, yeah. Of um, how about, uh, how much fifteen minutes, 15 minutes. Mm -hmm. of how much line spacing to leave, and um, the one good rule for that is the longer the line, the the longer the lines, the more space you should probably leave between them. If you're writing short lines, they can more easily get away with less space between them. Yeah. So um, that is to, um, and then um, I just wanted to tell you one more thing. I think that um, I'm going to go to the questions mm -hmm. soon, but I wanted to say one more, one more thing that for the beginners and even for me, I love botanical illustration. Mm -hmm. I usually use anything from nature to decorate my work. Mm -hmm. It does seem to me that pointed pen, and I don't know if you can see this little flower on top. Yes. Yeah. Um, it can be just ever so little. And if I don't have any ideas, I, I have lots of um, books at home that have little clip art in there. Mm -hmm. So I'm just going to flip through them and see, okay, okay. maybe I'll find something there that I can yeah. then transfer on my piece of work. Okay. But um, I truly like feel that our um, pointed pen lettering is something that is kind of asking for more naturally flowing botanical and, and you know, that was used throughout history. I mean, in architecture, and the Romans used it, the me medieval books used it. It's uh, it's something that if you don't know what to use, and obviously there's a lot of teachers who show you how to do all kinds of... Um, um, so here's another example that I just used a very light botanical vine going around this piece here. Mm -hmm. um, and the, the lines on this piece um, yeah. kind of um, complementing and contrasting with a with a curly lettering okay mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. um so the botanical is I, I've also done things like this um, and I'll show you because it's something not out of ordinary for me um and that one's upside down well, I mean the ship is upside, upside down is it better now yeah that's good and that's a so you see, you see here is a ship, okay? Mm -hmm. So it is not a botanical design. Um, and perhaps um, the ship could have been a little bit in a color that melted into the background. But, you know, I don't know how to draw, draw a ship. I have mm -hmm. to look it up. Mm -hmm. I had to look it up. I had to then copy it and then transfer it on my vellum with yeah. a transfer paper. So and I don't think, that's think a really that, good, yeah. A really good point that you don't necessarily have to be an expert in botanical illustration or 
um, I think there's a, a you know sometimes I, I particularly feel pressure to um, you know to, to know how to do all things so it's nice to see that you know you don't have to right think, right so yeah. most of the flowers that you see everywhere some of the borders I some of the borders I draw myself but but the flower you see here is actually from a book okay mm-hmm so I, uh, maybe it wasn't painted like that. Maybe it was a line drawing or something and I, I took it, but I, I liked it. And, and the other flower on the top, mm. then I draw to match it. So, yeah. but um, you do use those little Dover books um, mm -hmm. or however you call them. Some of them even come with the discs and, and um, so including this one um, here, I did not come with, up with that myself. Um, mm -hmm. Think of me as what you want. Mm -hmm. um, no. <laughs> taking images from Dover books is not stealing. They're copyright free. So, yeah. and then you add your own little, um, your own flair and you color. know, flourish yeah. from there. So yeah. um, now I wanted to get to the questions because I know that um, I got some earlier. So yeah, we had a few come through. Yeah. So are you ready to ask me? Yeah, so we, we've had a few come through. Um, the, we had a question about drawing up guidelines on leather. Um, so I don't know whether you wanted to tackle that one first. Okay. Yeah. I, um, when I put guidelines on leather um, and the, the piece of the, the ship that you just saw, saw that mm -hmm. was on leather, um, and um, soon you're going to see this white piece on leather, mm -hmm. right? This one. Okay. Um, I simply use a softer pencil. Um, I don't want to groove my leather. Um, mm -hmm. So um, on the light colored leather, which most of you will have, um, I will use the softer pencil and not a hard pencil regular pencil that you can erase on okay. dark leather i just use the um font supporter um chalk pencil yep. mechanical mm -hmm. um okay. so and then i erase everything later yep. it's a little bit harder to erase on the um on vellum but but it's pretty much the same okay yeah. hopefully that answered that question um, we also got a question about um, your opinions on using the bleak holder versus uh, the more traditional um, opinion of a straight holder for doing the script. Okay. That? Well, that is really something I use a bleak holder only. Now that I have used it for so long, yeah, uh, it's really hard for me and weird for me to hold. I almost bend my wrist too much. Mm -hmm. So I used the oblique holder. Now, keep in mind that copper plate was invented um, or developed during a time that there was no oblique pen holders. So everybody was using the, the, the quill or the straight holder. Yeah. Even um, the big uh, American star Spencer um, used a straight quill. So um, it seems to me it's a very much so more European thing to use the straight holder and maybe more American thing to use the oblique holder, but mm -hmm. it's really up to you. The oblique holder is made to help you put the, the nib under the corner that you need it on that slant. Now, yeah. if you do upright lettering, that might be different, but yeah. then again, I only use the oblique. Okay, thank you. Um, and in terms of the uh, I think we've had a bit of tips for composition. One question was um, getting tips for beginners for composition, composition text placement, for example. So you've talked about that. Um, mm -hmm. I think you, you covered that um, nicely in some of those examples. Um, and the space for flourishing that you allow, uh, um, how you do that, do you allow that space as you drop the guidelines or um, the best way to add that? Right, space right. Um, 
take a big sheet of paper. Uh, mm -hmm. You can't lay, you, your sheet of paper cannot be as big as a bed sheet, obviously. So it has to, you have to cut it somewhere, but leave yourself mm -hmm. too much space. So yeah. what if you end up lettering something and you just then decide where to, what to design? I mean, I'm not a big planner. Mm -hmm. I don't do a lot of roughs. Mm -hmm. My teachers have been very angry with me because of that, but <laughs> I am not a planner. Mm -hmm. um, if you want to be a planner, um, you probably have to be a little bit more of a planner on vellum because I, I, I can't recommend you leave a lot of space around on vellum. Mm -hmm. So take a design that you already know where everything goes when you use vellum, but paper is cheap. I mean, it's, it's yeah. your time that's worth the most. So yeah. leave mm -hmm. yourself a lot of space so that you can then put your decoration anywhere you want to. Okay, lovely. And in, in terms of decoration, we did just have a question come through um, that you haven't seen, which was, do you use a brush for the flowers or only using the nib to draw, um, to draw that illustration? I use a combination. I actually like to draw. I don't think that I, I can draw with a brush. No. Um, not me. Um, some people can actually, but not me. I draw it first with the nape and then I have a very small brush uh, that I fill it in. Yeah. Um, sometimes I need to use the brush to put some accents on top of my painting because the, the pen would then not give me a very good hairline okay. um, on top of the paint, but, but I use both. Um, brush is certainly always on my desk. Okay, lovely. Um, and I think, I think that covers all the questions that we've gotten in advance. Um, so mm -hmm. we'll see if there's any other questions that anyone wants to ask now. I think, before... there, was a, I think there was a question about uh, flourishes and um, spacing Let me from Julia. That. Yes, she did ask a question about spacing. Let me double check. Yep. I don't remember exactly what the question was, but I think it was about um, how much flourishes or how much space do I leave between the lines? Well, yeah. I'm glad that I got that question because it is a design question. I tell you with everything that I said today, I apply that also to my line spacing. If you like to flourish gals, everybody out there, you are leaving too little space. Every one of you leaves too little space. I need that all the time. I, I mean, I, I, I see that all the time and I, I wish I could be there and tell you, <laughs> leave just a little bit more space between the lines and the flourishes would look so more natural there and not mm -hmm. squeeze. If you want beautiful open flourishes, you don't want to squeeze them, so leave more space. If you're doing just plain and cross a script, you don't need to leave that much space. Even do I yeah. like always more space. Always more is better, but yeah. try it out. Yeah. Um, also, the question was about if I put my flourishes in there right away. Actually, my A centers, I usually do right away. Mm -hmm because I know how much space I have above me. I don't know how much space I have below me because the line below me is supposed yeah. to come. Okay. So sometimes, this the, yeah, these centers, sometimes I leave them off and add them later, mm -hmm. but you have to leave them off, not in the middle of the flourish, mm -hmm. but right at the X height line so that the connection that you make in then yeah with the left stem mm -hmm. is not visible. Mm -hmm. I don't want to see those connections where you have lifted your pen and put it back and not quite where the pen should have gone. It's very run. difficult to hide that right in the very right. airline. So it? that's why they have to be hidden somewhere closer mm -hmm. to the X height. Yeah. And just quickly, last one, because I think we might just be about to cut off. I'm going to guess that your go-to nib might be the Hunt 102, but correct me if I'm wrong. <laughs> um, my favorite nib that I do everything with, I don't like very flexible nibs. Okay. Uh, is Hunt 101. 101. <laughs> very mm -hmm. good. Yes. And so I, um, sure. Oh, sorry, I was going to say some, um, somebody's asking about suggesting some books to study more about designs or about composition. Were there any 
uh, particularly good books that you could recommend? Okay, I, I have a recommendation because I took this book out just now, um, or now, just yesterday, to see what my teacher, my mentor, says about design. And this is about the only book that I know about design um, that gives really good advice um, is the Just bear with me a minute. I'm sorry, we didn't get the name of the book, which is brilliant. So that's that's the main thing, but I was hoping to say goodbye. <laughs> Let me just call her back. Hold on, everyone. Oh, I'm changing colors. Hold on. Oh, you didn't get the name of the book. It was um, Foundations of Calligraphy by Sheila Waters, which, um, yeah, is a really, really good book. So let's see if we can get her back to say goodbye. Thank you all for your patience. Uh, just give me a sec. Okay, I'm I'm gonna I'm just, I'm just gonna call uh, Maria Helena to to get her back. So bear with me. I'll start another live. We'll do a quick um, uh, title check on that book, and then we'll come back and say goodbye. And any other last questions? Oh, okay, wait, wait. She's with me. Hold on. Okay, I'm Hello. sorry. That's okay. No, I'm, I'm sorry. sorry there's a delay for some reason and I'm thinking maybe because I'm so far from you on the <laughs> continent. So, um, world. so we just got the um I think we managed to squeeze in the title of the book there was Foundations of Calligraphy by Sheila Waters. Is that correct? Correct. Okay. And there's fab. a um there is a chapter there that's called um Design and Layout. Mm -hmm. Um and then another chapter that's called From Conception to Completion. So there, obviously, Sheila Waters does not do uh, pointed pen, and not mm. all of that is, is uh, applicable to pointed pen. So I want to, at the end of this conversation, I want to point out that we pointed pen calligraphers have to understand that we are dealing with very tiny, delicate, fainty forms that are want to escape to the background so we have to bring them forward with mm -hmm. all those little tricks that so i want this message to stay with you yes. leave yourself enough room yeah use the correct background that advantages your work um use the most ink that gives you the the, the best don't use pink ink on white paper yeah. for your artwork because it won't pop so yeah. all those little things, we as as a point of pen calligraphers, we have to um, consider more than people who take a really wide pen and mm -hmm. can letter pretty much on anything. Yeah. Lovely. So really good tip. So we've got some really good points there about making the the um, very delicate script stand out, um, using design to complement that. Um, and I think you've done a really lovely job of reinforcing that message. And I'm sure everyone loved it. I know a lot of people have commented to say they really loved the live. So we really appreciate you taking the time to talk to us today. Oh, it was my pleasure. I, 
wishing you a happy Easter Monday and I hope you enjoy the rest of your afternoon and evening ahead. Thank you so much. Thanks, Maria Helena. <laughs> we'll see you again Thank soon. Thank you all. Thank you all. Good luck with your Bye. homeworks. Please post them. Bye. <laughs> yeah, that, that should be the challenge, isn't it? Get everyone to redo <laughs> one of their previous ones. <laughs> right. Thank Bye -bye. you. Bye, everyone. Bye.